Welcome to the gym. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write the equation of lips when the center is not at the origin. So in the previous video, we worked on um, problems that only had the uh, center of the ellipse at the origin. Well, you can see in this case, um, they give us a center. It's at negative two, or negative one comma two, so obviously it's not at the center. And in this one, we don't really know, but we're gonna plot the information and determine that it's not at the center. Um, so again, when writing the equation of lips, when you're given some piece of information, the most important thing that I think uh, you need to do is plot the information that is given. So first of all, we see that the center is at negative 2, 1. So what I'm going to do is plot negative 2 or negative 1, positive 2. Don't know why I keep on saying that. And I'm going to label that as a center. Now, to write the equation of the ellipse, we need to identify a squared and b squared. Well, remember, a is the distance from the vertices to the center, and b is the distance from the co-vertices from the center. Well, in, given our information, we don't really know um, what that length is. They don't say, you know, just a, your vertices are this, your uh, co-vertices are this. But they do tell us the length of our major axis as well as the length of our minor axis, as well as tell us if our major axis is vertical or if and our minor axis is horizontal. And that's very, very important because we have two equations for an ellipse. This equation is for when we have a major axis that is horizontal. This equation is for when we have a major axis that's vertical. Well, obviously it says major axis. I guess I didn't write major axis, but oh, major vertical axis. So it's a major vertical axis. Therefore, we're going to use this formula. And again, remember the, really the difference between these. Remember, a, a represents the distance from the center to your vertices, and B represents the distance from your center to your co-vertices. Well, um, your A is always going to be larger. The distance to your vertices is always going to be larger than the distance to your co-vertices because the major axis is always larger than the minor axis. So when a squared is under x, you have a horizontal major axis. When a squared is under y, you have a vertical major axis. So therefore, we know we're going to use this formula. So I'm just going to write it down so I don't forget. OK, so now we need to look at to our next piece of information. We know h and k. We know that's negative 1 and 2. So I'm just going to label that. So that's h, and that's k. Um, the next thing is we need to figure out what is A. Now, again, I'm just going to kind of draw a nice little, um, oh, it has a vertical major axis, right? So it's going to look something like that, OK? Now, from here, we know that the distance from, um, we know we're going to have a major axis that's basically vertical, right? And the distance from our major axis from our vertice to our center is A. Well, we can go in the positive direction as well as the negative direction. And what we notice is then the length of the whole major axis from vertice to vertice is not A. A is the distance from the vertice to the center. So if you have, if you're going from two different vertices back to the center, the length of your major axis is going to be 2A. So therefore, what we can say is 2A is equal to 10. Then we look at the minor axis, which is perpendicular going through the center of your major axis. And we have our two co-vertices. There's vertice and there's vertice. Now remember, the distance from the center to your co-vertices, or co-vertices to your center, is b. Well, again, we can go in the positive direction, or we can go in the negative direction. And again, what we notice is the length from co-vertice to co-vertice is not b. It's going to be 2b, right? Co-vertice to co-vertice is b plus b, which is 2b. So therefore, I can also say that 2b is equal to the length of the minor axis, which is 4. Now, to find out what, to find the value of b and a, I just need to solve. So I divide by 2, divide by 2, b equals 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, a equals 5. So now I know b, I know a, and I know h and k. That's all the information I need to write the equation of the lip. So I'm just going to plug them into the equation that I determined was correct because this is the equation for a vertical major axis which was given to me in the problem. All right, so I do x minus uh, h, which is a negative 1, squared, all over b squared, which is 2, plus y minus k, which is 2. And I'm putting them in parentheses just to kind of remind myself that I'm inserting these values in for the variables, in for a squared. And of course, you don't always need to uh, put them in parentheses. But again, it, you know, to me, it, it really, really helps to avoid mistakes. For instance, 
x minus negative 1. A lot of people just see the minus and they'll say, oh, we'll just put in the 1 there. That's minus 1. No, it's x minus h. h is negative 1. So it's x minus a negative 1. Minus a negative is going to the same thing as a addition. So my equation is x plus 1 squared divided by 2 squared, which is 4, plus y minus 2 is just y minus 2 squared over 5 squared, which is 25, and that equals 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write that equation. Now let's move on to the next one. Now the next one, we don't really have any idea of where the center is. All we're given is the endpoints of the major axis and the endpoints of the minor axis. Well, we know the endpoints of the major axis are our vertices, and the endpoints of our minor axis are going to be our covertices. The only problem is we just don't know, one, what the center is, and does our, um, does our uh, ellipse look like this, or does it have a horizontal major axis? So the only way to determine that, or not the only way, but the way that I prefer to determine that is to plot the information. Use my black. All right, so I plot 2, 2. We know that's the endpoints of major axis, so that's one vertice. And then the endpoint of the other one is 8, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2. So automatically, just by doing that first information, I can now determine that my major axis is horizontal. And I know that my minor axis is going to be vertical. But remember, since the major axis is horizontal, I'm going to use this equation rather than that equation. So I'm just going to write that equation down before I forget and make a mistake. OK. Um, and then we also need to plot our minor uh, endpoints of our minor axis, which are going to be our covertices. So let's see, that's going to be at 5, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 1, 2, 3. And at 5, comma 1, 5, comma 1. OK, so that's your covertice and covertice. Remember, your minor axis goes through these. And the important thing to understand, what I like about graphing, is you, know, you could easily use the midpoint formula for both of these. Because notice that the center is the midpoint of your two vertices. The center is the a midpoint of your two covertices, right? So you could easily use the midpoint formula um, without graphing to find the center. But what I like about graphing it is understanding that the minor axis and the, and the minor axis and the vertical axis intersect at the center. So I see that, hey, the center is right here. And as long as I graphed semi OK, I can determine that the center is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's on the minor axis, and 1, 2. It's on the major axis. Because the center, remember, is the intersection of my major and the minor. So therefore, I can state that the center Center is at 5, comma 2. Okay. Now all we need to do is identify um, A and, a and uh, B. Remember, A is the distance from your center to your vertices. So I'm just going to count here. 1, 2, let's see. 1, 2, 3. So I can say A is equal to 3. And then the distance from my center to my covertice is just 1. B equals 1. So now I have the center, which is my H and my K. I have A and I have B. I have the right equation because I know it's a horizontal major axis. So therefore, I'm just going to plug it in and get the equation. So I'll have x minus h squared over a squared, which is 3 squared, plus y minus k, which is 2 all over b squared, which is 1, equals 1. OK, so now I just go ahead and simplify, and I'll just kind of write the answer over here. So that's x minus 5 squared over 9 plus y minus 2 squared over 1 equals 1. And you don't really need to write the over 1. You could just leave it out as that. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the equation of an ellipse when your center is not at the origin.